in Paris, there was during the during World War II, there was a lot of resistance. Um, we know that um, people in France took in so um, pilots who had crash landed. They um, did a lot of things like that. We know that the resistance managed to get control of the pipes that were going to put oil and gasoline into the uh, North Sea and the Channel and set it on fire before D-Day, if D-Day were to happen or if they were to be invaded, and we know that that was stopped. But there's also a story of a little old lady who um, managed to cause a lot of trouble, and what she did is she would go with her crutches every day to the, to the metro, to the subway, and she would just painstakingly work her way down the steps, one step at a time. And if a o German officer went by, she'd use one of her crutches, trip him, and he'd go falling down the stairs, and she'd be, oh, so sorry, and she'd struggle to get down there to help him, and then later she'd put a little notch in her in her, in her cane and one more down. So she couldn't really harm them, but she could give them, get them trouble. Now there was another lady in the resistance who was um, a very small lady. And what women did is they tried to make them look, themselves look unappealing because they didn't want to be accosted by the, by the German invaders. And so she was wearing an old men's pants and a men's shirt. And underneath she had actually taped guns, right, um, pistols to her legs. And there was a um, Nazi um, guy, you know, one of the soldiers, who took a shine to her and was trying to pick her up. And so he's trying to lead her away, and, and she's trying to keep him away from touching her because, after all, she does. if he goes to give her a hug, he's going to realize she's got something underneath her clothing. And so she's keeping away, and she basically fir flirts for her life and she talks to him about oh just let her have a chance to go home and wash up and she's got this great red dress and by the time she's done talking the guy's just drooling and she gets away from him well of course she doesn't go meet him and so that's what she did to um, help with the resistance so she did those things now in Denmark I've got two stories one baker um, a man and wife had special passes to be able to get out early in the morning because after all they had to go to the store and bake bread and they would do that, and they had a special area just for things for the Germans. And the Germans, they always sold to, because they could not sell to them, but they would sell them day-old things, and they would sell them things that they had spat on. So again, they, nothing they could really do to stop them, but they, were, um, they used the fact that they were out early to deliver anti-German and um, information and stuff to the resistance. So they were couriers for the resistance. But she also got her revenge this way. Now there was another man, um, Egan Anderson tells this story. He says that a friend of his was up in his upstairs second floor um, apartment when he saw, he looked out the back window and he saw, oh, one of those black Gestapo cars with the red Nazi flags, you know, flying. And he ran to the front window and there's another Gestapo car and the guy grabs his hat and his coat and he goes out on the landing and he starts pounding on his own locked front door. And when the Nazis come glumping up the stairs, he says, do you know where this Jew is, he owes me money, and the Gestapo are all, oh, yeah, yeah, we know that. And they were after him, too, and then they let him go, because they thought that he was some good, good Dane who wanted to get even with the Jew. And so that was another tricky thing that was done during World War II.